Hello, this is Miss Pat from Samuels Public Library. Today in Science Scouts, we're going to learn a little bit about the heart. We'll learn about what, um, how it works and we'll learn about how you know if you're having a heart attack and what could hurt your heart and things like that. So our story today is going to be, why do I bleed? Right, this is by Kirstie Holmes. Okay, why do I bleed? Because you all know we have blood, right? This one says, do you need a bandage? Have you ever cut your finger, had a bloody nose, or needed a bandage for your knee? What's that red stuff in your body? And what does it do? When you cut or scratch your skin, the red stuff comes out. That's blood. Blood is very important, and it's supposed to stay inside of you. But what exactly is blood? Where does it come from? All humans and most animals have blood inside their bodies. We need it to live. Blood has lots of really important jobs to do. Blood travels all through our body. It carries useful things like oxygen to the part, body parts that need them. Body also heals the cuts and helps to protect us from illnesses. But how? Red or white, what's in your blood? Blood is made up of tiny parts called cells. Red blood cells carry oxygen around the body. White blood cells attack and destroy diseases and germs. Blood also contains material that helps to heal cuts. The material clumps together to stop the blood from flowing out. There is a liquid in blood, carries things such as nutrients around the body. So whenever you guys eat, there are nutrients and vitamins in that food and it gets into your blood and it carries it all over the place. And so, so far we know the red carries oxygen and the white fights the germs, and then it also carries vitamins and nutrients. The heart pumps your blood. The heart is an organ. An organ is a body part that does a job. The heart's job is to pump the blood around your body. The left side of your heart is called the left ventricle. It sends blood full of oxygen from the lungs to the rest of your body. But the right side is called the right ventricle. It sends the used blood back to the lungs to get more oxygen. I feel the beat. As your heart pumps the blood, it beats in a steady rhythm. If you listen to someone's chest, you will hear a bump, 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 bump. This is called a heartbeat. A heart beats over 2.5 billion times in a person's life. Not in a minute. <laughs> Veins and arteries, the tubes that move the blood from the heart around the body are called blood vessels. There are two types. The veins are vessels that carry the blood back to the heart. Arteries are vessels that carry the blood that has oxygen away from the heart. And one way to remember that is the A, arteries, is away, carries it away from the heart, which means it has oxygen. Squeeze your hand and make a tight fist. Look at your wrist. You should be able to see your veins and arteries at work. Okay. Blood is circulated, which means it moves around our body. You couldn't live without blood. Follow the oxygen around this body and see where it goes. Step one, you breathe in your oxygen through your nose and mouth, and the oxygen goes to your lungs. Step two, oxygen in the lungs goes into the blood. The heart beats like a pump and pushes the blood around your body. Step three, your arteries are tubes that carry the blood filled with oxygen. So that's all the red that has oxygen. Step four, when the oxygen in the blood gets used up, tubes called veins carry the blood back to the heart. The blood gets pumped to the lungs to be filled with oxygen again. Scabs and scratches, blood belongs inside your body. If you cut yourself or have a nosebleed, the blood will flow outside your body. Blood on the outside could be a sign that something is wrong. A special material in your blood quickly fills up any cut on your body. It stops the bleeding by forming a hard crust on top of the cut called a scab. Never pick a scab. It will fall off by itself when your skin has healed. 
There are different types of blood. Blood type is based on the kind of red blood cells you have. You could be type A, type B, type AB, or type O. If a person has an accident and loses lots of blood, they can be given blood from another person. The person who gives the blood to another person is called a donor. A donor's blood has to match the blood type of the person receiving it. Okay, so that means that you can't give A to B or B to A, because right, that'll cause a lot of problems. Blood busters. If all your blood vessels were laid in a straight line, it would be over 60,000 miles long. A blue whale has the largest heart of any living thing. It's a really big mammal. The pygmy shrew has the smallest heart of any mammal. Its heart is the size of your thumbnail. It takes only 20 seconds for your blood to travel all the way around your body, 20 seconds. So that means in one minute, it goes around your body three times. All right, so today we're gonna to learn a little bit more about the heart. We just read about the blood. And let's see. Okay, so our heart is a muscle. We also called it an organ before. Right, and it's a muscle. Its job is to pump the blood throughout the circulatory system. Remember, circulatory means it's going to move all the way around your body. So that's what the job, the heart's job is. And you can see the heart right here. Okay, and remember those blue ones are called the veins. They're carrying the blood back to the heart. And the red ones are the arteries. They're carrying the blood with oxygen away from the heart and to the rest of your body because you need oxygen. All right, so there are actually four chambers in the heart, right? The book talked about two, the two ventricles, because they are the ones that are pumping it to the lungs or to your body. But it also has the atriums, two atriums, that's the top part of your heart. And they're the ones getting the blood back. Okay, so the right atrium gets the blood back from the body. And the left atrium gets the blood back from the lungs. So the atriums are getting the blood back from the body or the lungs. So they're either getting, um, not blue blood, but they're getting the blood from the veins and they're getting the blood back that has no oxygen or they're getting blood back that does have oxygen. Your ventricles are the ones that are gonna pump it away. Okay, so the right ventricle pumps the blood to your lungs and the left ventricle is gonna pump the blood to your body. The right side, which moves the blood from the body to the lungs, that's low in oxygen. Remember, that's the one that comes back from the body. It's already, it's already been used up inside your body and it's moving the um, blood back to the heart through the veins, which are blue. The left side moves it to the lungs and then to the body so that it gets um, high in oxygen. Okay, because like I said, the body needs oxygen. So what can cause heart problems? Well, you can have age. Older people have weaker hearts because their hearts have been pumping so long. Smoking. Any kind of smoking is gonna damage the lungs and it's gonna damage your, your arteries. Um, family history, if you have grandparents and great grandparents and aunts and uncles that have had heart attacks, it increases your chances. Diet, even if nobody in your family ever had a heart attack, but you have a really bad diet and you're eating lots of fatty foods and lots of salt, salty foods and alcohol and sugar, you increase your chances and lifestyle. If there's a lot of stress in your life, if you're not exercising, you wanna be a couch potato, okay? You're just sitting around and you're eating all this fatty food, you increase it. Now, looking at these arteries, remember the arteries are the uh, blood vessels that carry the blood away from your heart. So it's carrying oxygenated blood. Now it has plaque right here. Plaque is gonna be from the fatty foods. Remember, the blood carries the nutrients, too, from whatever you eat. So if it's carrying fat, it's getting stuck to the side of the inside. And the more that blocks the artery, you end up not getting so much blood through. That's when you climb stairs and you go, <sighs> okay? That's because your heart is working so hard to get the blood through 
this little itty bitty hole. Okay, and that's not good. Signs of a heart attack. Now, sometimes they're different for men and women, but for the most part, they're the same. Okay, it could be a chest pain, right? You have a heart, uh, you're having a hard time. You know that it's, it, it almost feels like your heart's gonna jump out of your body. Okay, but you, you're really having a shortness of breath and it hurts to breathe. You're having a pain and it could be in your jaw, your neck, the back, your arm, your shoulders, right? And this is for men and women. So this pain is gonna go from your shoulder up into your neck and into your jaw, right? And you're gonna shortness of breath. Those are the signs of heart attacks. You need to get to the hospital. For the women also, it could be lightheaded, unusually tired and feeling nauseous. And that's on top of all this other. Okay, so don't think the next time you're feeling sick to your stomach that it's a heart attack. Usually it's with this other stuff. All right, CPR. CPR is cardiac pulmonary resuscitation, right? And you've probably seen this on some TV shows, even some cartoons, all right? Easy way to remember how to do CPR is CAB. C stands for circulation. That's gonna be your compressions. Compressions is when you're going to be putting your hands together, okay? And what you do is you put your hands through, through there, and you're putting it on their chest and you're pumping. Compressions keep the blood flowing. Since your heart's not beating anymore, right? The person has died for whatever reason. And this doesn't, this isn't something you do if you go to a funeral home. This is something that if somebody has a heart attack, you want to keep the blood moving. So you're pumping for them. You're pushing. That's compressions. Airway, you tilt their head back a little bit so that you're going to be able to get air in. Okay, you're opening the air, breathing. And if somebody else is there, you cannot do compressions and breathing by yourself. This is a two-person job. Okay. If there's not two people, just do the compressions. The pumping is more important than trying to get breathe in. You can, if you've been trained, do both, but it's one or the other. So you'll do so many compressions and then you'll breathe so three, breathe, uh, three breaths and then you'll breathe, um, pump again. If it's only you and you haven't been trained, just do the compressions, you're pumping on their chest. Okay, that allows the oxygen to get into the lungs though if you're breathing and therefore the oxygen will get into the blood. And if you're pushing, you're moving the blood through their body. Because otherwise the blood's not moving, the oxygen's not moving, and that person's not going to live. We are going to build a functioning heart model. All right, so the first bottle, and you can see the pictures here. And if you come into the library, we're gonna give you a kit, it shows you the pictures as well. The first bottle is gonna be the left atrium. And the middle bottle will be the left ventricle. So the left atrium, remember, is getting the oxygenated blood back from your lungs. And it's gonna pump it to the left ventricle and then it's gonna pump it to the rest of your body. So the last bottle is gonna be empty to start and that's going to be your body. We're gonna pump the blood into your body, okay? So let's get this thing set up. Okay, so if you come into the library and ask for our science kit, this is what you're gonna get. Okay, we already have three bottles in here and I've already got mine set up, but what you're gonna do is put water at least halfway in one and you're going to put a hole, I mean, I'm sorry, put a, a cap that has two holes and you'll be able to see that they have two different size holes, okay? One's a really big one, one's a little one. And you're gonna put that on the first cap. So first you'll fill it with water, put a drop of red food coloring in there, put the cap on. Now, before you put the cap on, you might wanna take the straw and put it on because it's a lot easier to do when it's not on. I took the same colored straws for blue um, to show that it's going from the atrium to the, but it doesn't matter which straws you use. You're gonna end up with four straws. So if you pinch the bottom, and you kind of make it smaller, you can kind of stick it in there. And then you want it to come back out. We don't want it to be pinched because then it won't, um, the blood won't go through. Okay, so you really want it to be going through and then you're going to pull it out 
and go like that, okay? And you're gonna do that same thing with the second, second cap. You're gonna put the straw in one hole. And now you're gonna have two. And what you're gonna to wanna to do is take tape, okay? Very carefully. And again, you might wanna do this before you put it on the bottles of water. And you're gonna to have to tape the two together very carefully. Now, if you're not sure that you have it all done and you'll find out, you're gonna get a little bit of clay and you're gonna be able to put that around. You might have to um, do this first time I did this and I'll be honest, I haven't done this one since I've fixed it. I ended up with some leaky valves. Leaky valves in a heart mean you could have a heart attack. But I started squeezing it and it started coming out all over the place. So make sure that you have on some clothes that you don't care if they get red dye on them there. Okay, but you wanna tape it. You could put clay around it. You have to make sure there's no holes between this drawer and the other drawer. And you put them in here. And then you're gonna do the same thing on this drawer. You're gonna tape this drawer. Okay, now I have clay around here because my holes, when I were, was doing it, I still had um, really big spots and it wasn't going through. So I put more clay around the top of this one and even around the big hole, not around the little hole on this one. Remember I told you there is a little hole, okay, on this one. We don't, we wanna keep that one open, okay? But around the big hole, wherever the stores are, I put a little clay and I might have to keep squeezing it because I don't want air getting in, okay? Air getting in means I have leaky valves and it's not gonna work so well. Now this bottle, remember this is my body. So my left atrium, to my left ventricle, this is coming from the lungs. I'm going, <gasps> I'm getting oxygen in. I'm putting it, oh, I'm gonna squeeze it over here. And then it's gonna go from here to the body, okay? Now, remember I told you the directions are going to be in. And I even have the pictures to show you. Okay, that this is how you're gonna set it up. Okay, and the pictures are there. And it's gonna tell you to pinch. Okay, we wanna squeeze. I'm gonna make sure that this is not working. But this is, I don't wanna squeeze this. If I squeeze this one, I'm gonna be blocking the blood going through there, right? But I do wanna squeeze this because right now I got a lot of air in there. So I'm gonna squeeze this one. All right, um, I think I pinched my thing here. So it's not working. So I'm gonna check to see that I don't have any leaky valves. My big problem is right here. So I might hold this just to make sure I don't have. Okay. Now, it's not working so well, huh? Which one is the one that pu pushes it all the blood through there, remember? Okay, so that's gonna be this one. So we're gonna squeeze this one to the body for the moment. Okay, and you can kind of see, I don't know if you can actually see here. I'm gonna try and see. You can see it up in the green one. You can kind of see it here. So as I squeeze this one, I'm getting blood, I'm getting water from this one to here. Now, when I open this one, and I'm gonna squeeze this one now. Whoops. I'm gonna squeeze it here. So I'm not getting as much leaking. Because remember, I kind of have a thing here. So I'm gonna squeeze it here because here, I'm kind of squeezing it both. I'm squeezing blood back this way. And I don't wanna do that because I got kind of got a leak here. So I'm gonna squeeze this. And you can see it going into, okay. And it's going that way. So I can squeeze this one right here next to it. 
and go like this, and I'm gonna get blood from my atrium. It's going from here to here, just by squeezing the middle. Okay, because he's the one that, and you can kind of do it like your heartbeat. Okay. Now I can feel air here, so I know he's not going so well. And I'm going to squeeze here. And again, you might have to keep messing with your clay. All right. And if I do this a lot, like my heartbeat, remember how many times it said? It goes through your whole body in 20 seconds. Okay. You guys could do some exercises and find out what kind of, um, what makes your heartbeat go really, really fast, right? And what, we all know some of this stuff from PE or just even from running around the house, right? When you're doing jumping jacks, when you're doing running, when you're doing any kind of exercise, okay, any kind of movement. Now, if you do this, nope, you're not really, getting your heartbeat going, okay? You're being a couch potato. Remember, that's going to contribute to your heart not working so well. So that when you want to run up and down the stairs or run outside, you're going, <sighs> you're going to be so tired because your heart's not used to working that hard. Okay, so you want to keep moving every day. Walk, run, do something. You have to keep moving. But if you just kind of sit, even if you want to read a book, right? You want to read a book, walk around the table while you're doing it, okay? You're still walking, you're moving, your heart is pumping, right? You're exercising that heart and that's what you want to do, okay? So again, you might have to experiment a little bit with these. I kind of got a lot of leaky valves here, right? But hopefully you learn a little bit about heart I strongly recommend when you get old enough that you take a CPR class. I've taken several. You don't, I've never ever had to use it and I hope I never do, but it is a good thing to have, okay? Just to know how the heart works and how to help people. So take care, um, happy Valentine's Day. I know this isn't the normal stuff for Valentine's, but we did learn about hearts instead of just Valentine's and enjoy. I'll see you guys next week. We're going to learn about um, Thomas Jefferson and Abe Lincoln and Presidents because Presidents Day is coming up. So take care. Bye.